drug supply and is in current possession of a firearm. The West Midlands, home to some of the most notorious gangs in the UK. Keon Lincoln was just 15 years old when he was set upon in Handsworth in Birmingham. He died in hospital two hours later. We just see him laying on the bench, just blood coming out, basically on the verge of dying. A region where people as young as 11 are being drawn into gang life. I always told myself, why am I like still like this? Like, why am I doing the same thing again and again and getting caught for the same thing again and again? We are following the young people stuck in gangs. So what's brought you to counselling? I get like nightmares from like what happened. Their lives are in danger. So we're blurring their faces, changing their voices, and using animation to tell their stories. When you're in this gang life, it's that feeling that makes you like, you need to do this, you need to do this. A 15-year-old boy died following a stabbing in Wolverhampton. The way I see like kids getting stabbed nowadays and I felt trapped in my own area. We have exclusive access to the cops dealing with the young people caught up in gang rivalry. All you do is circle the ends all day, doing jack shit, jack shit, same how you're doing now, jack shit. And the charity trying to help them break free. Basically, I'm just unstoppable. Oh, if you look around that, you're either gone permanently or you're in prison. With more than 80 gangs in the West Midlands, over 1,500 young people are at risk as a result of their involvement. One of these people is 17-year-old JJ. Five years ago, he started to get drawn in. So basically in school, one of my friends I was really close with, he got into a little issue. And it came to a one point where my friend was like, just bring the knife into school. I showed the knife. And I remember just getting him on his knees and everything. That's when I got kicked out of the school. Pupils who have been excluded are more likely to carry knives. Pupil referral units, or PRUs, are supposed to be a safe place for them. But in some areas, they can be the perfect place for gangs to recruit new members. It's a form of grooming. This is what happened to JJ. And in that pool, there was gang members in there, like in the 11 and everything. You see people just getting stabbed up. So people around my age, they were, like people in your age, they were growing up to be like that. JJ's gang involvement developed outside of the pool. Yeah, it was a gang and it was known to make money only. It wasn't known to for beat, like, any violence. I'm the youngest one in there. These people were around like in 18, then there was like a 19, 20. And we always just find ways to just sell weed or anything. And the older people just used to sell hard for stuff. Just a month in, like, we were just making for like a couple thousand within a week. I wouldn't say no to something, like whatever they wanted to do. And in my heart that time, I think it was in my heart to like, to be around these people. JJ's fierce loyalty to the gang is a common symptom of grooming. Teens often think they've made a choice to join a gang. They'll do whatever it takes for their mates and the postcode they come from. This includes dealing drugs. It can lead to serious violence with rival gangs. But there was this one day, there was another gang. They started violence with one of my friends. They just smacked them up and everything left in the hospital and that. Uh, and I came to when all of us, we started just carrying weapons just to protect myself and also like score a point as well. It's like, I always wanted to do something back as well. Like, it was always in my heart. Police were called just after 11 p.m. following violence between a group of youths. We believe that all were carrying knives. He was stabbed over 40 times and at least three of those wounds on their own would have been fatal. According to West Midlands Police, the number of under-18s involved in knife crime has more than doubled in the last five years. A 15-year-old boy died following a stabbing in Wolverhampton. 
Last year, there were 836 knife crime victims under the age of 16, recorded by West Midlands Police. With over 450 teenagers arrested for knife crime, an increase of 54% on the previous year. West Midlands Police has teams of officers trying to reduce the growing gang violence. One of these is led by Sergeant Tony Webb. He's a dad, so for him it's personal and frightening. The amount of young children that you see, you know, turning up at hospital with gunshot injuries or knife wounds or get arrested carrying machetes and zombie knives is just, you know, ridiculous. This evening, Tony is trying a different approach to policing urban street gangs. There's a perception that all we do is try and arrest people, put people in prison, just arresting our way out of it is not going to solve the problem. Tony wants to try and reach the young people at risk of gang exploitation before the grooming begins. For me, uh, what looks as a, a success would be is if we identified a group which we know may be involved in gang activity, but also identify people that are with them or are looking up to them. If we can engage a, a young enough age or a, at an early enough point, that gives us an opportunity to, to break that mould. People that we may not be currently aware of, so that we can then, uh, it gives us opportunities to look at speaking with their family, speak with their family. Go ahead. As you're most likely aware, there's a group in the area which label themselves as a, as a bit of a gang. So what we're looking at doing is just some low level, nice engagement. Hopefully they'll speak to us. Sounds large. Lovely, okay. Lovely, thank you. That gent is one of the ones that represents the, uh, the group we've discussed. Yes, yes, I think unfortunately they know our car, Gangs use social media to share the details of unmarked police cars. And this is a car that the group recognised. So one of these is one of the gang numbers. I don't think they want to engage with us, unfortunately. Tony spots another group, some of which are known gang members. What's up, Yeah, man. How you doing? You're right. Okay. How you doing? Get off, bro. Get off what? No oh, we're here to engage with you. Mum's life, all you do is harass us, bro. Mum's, all you do is circle the ends all day, doing jack shit. Jack shit, same how you're doing now. Jack shit. Who have you caught? What have you got out running after us? <laughs> Fuck all. No, guess. Fuck all. Come start search us what we got. Fuck all. All right then, so circle and go back to your office because there's no need to be here, bro. And you stop, fam. Did you recognise the others? No. I recognise the, the two of the three here were known. Yeah. The urban street gangs attempt to take over and gain control of the postcodes they operate in, wearing coloured bandanas that relate to the areas they are representing. It's massively frustrating, isn't it? Get out of my area. You know, it's nobody's area. And it could be somebody's wearing the wrong colour bandana that goes into another area where, that is represented by another colour bandana. Um, and the impact that has is you're likely to be subjected to some serious violence from that other group. Postcode wars are conflicts, or beef, between rival gangs over territory. Clashes can start when one gang starts selling drugs in an area controlled by another. The result? Serious violence. It happened to JJ. You see, even when I was 15, I got a lot of friends. Can't lie, most of my friends have betrayed me. I was in a relationship, and these people that I don't get along with, they made us set me up. So I go to the station and I just see five people. 
these people are 17 18 and i just see bottles in the hand i'm like okay let me just go like just let me just walk nothing's gonna happen i'm good i'm good then i asked my name i just got bowled in the head and everything straight away they all swung at me these what tried to poke me with the ball after as well. The ones they smashed on my head. Like the first time it didn't smash, the second time it hit me, it smashed, and they tried to poke me with the ball and everything on camera as well and everything. They punched me, everything, my nose was broken, there was just blood coming out of my head, and I'm literally able to walk, and that boosted my confidence. <laughs> If someone does something mad to me, I can hold it, I can firm it, I can endure the pain. And that's when after, it got me mental though, the fact that they did it to me. Kay is a 15 year old. His contact with gangs started early. I was only a little kid at the time. The first thing I ever saw was just kids smoking weed, dressed in black in a park, and then I thought it was cool. The first stage to grooming is targeting. Yeah, I just saw kids like doing all this gang stuff. Robbing people, drug dealing, like making money to live. Just violence, really. They formed a trusting relationship with him. Comes as like a whole new family, like when you join gangs, you know. You feel like no one's gonna touch you because you know people. And then he was trapped. It made me feel good at the time, but then I start making you do and stuff, and then we get involved with their beef. And you start because you're from a different area. People just from different coast cultures, just like have arguments and that, like, start texting and saying, I'm gonna come stab you and all this and that. When I started getting the beef with a lot of people and I couldn't go anywhere no more, I felt trapped in my own area. And then everything happened. Yeah, this incident we're involved in, there's just been a shooting, just been a shooting. Last year, West Midlands Police recorded 585 firearm offences. That's the second highest behind the Metropolitan Police. Possibly on a white BMW, just involved in a shooting on the A38 Great Charles Street, heading out of Birmingham. And there were 270 gunshots fired. Four teenagers lost their lives in just five months. A group of teenagers armed with a revolver and large knives chased Keon Lincoln down the street, repeatedly stabbing him before the fatal shot being fired. In 2021, there were over 3,500 knife and weapon offences committed by under-18s in England and Wales. And the UK's youngest gun killer was sentenced to life in prison, aged 14. Tony's been on the gang's team for the past three years. He's seen it firsthand. So what we've got here is a young man being stopped in a, a retail um, shopping mall in the centre of Birmingham. He's 14 years old. He's disclosed to one of the officers that he's currently carrying a knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah straight there, yeah. That's been removed by the officers and that's wrapped in a, um, a coloured bandana, which is associated with a particular area of Birmingham. I'm just going to continue the search. Yeah, I've got a BB gun. Is this loaded or something? It's only got one bullet in it. So, it's a situation which is really difficult to control. All we can do, I believe, is that we can try and educate and influence people away from carrying weapons. 